for dibs, you were talking about um, not limiting yourself to like certain categories, like office supplies or medical supplies, but using the opportunities to like create a lane for yourself. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? Like, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So th that's, that's good. That's a clarifying question, right? So there's a, remember, okay, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta know this about Serena. I, my perspective is just different, right? So I, I never just go for what I could see face value. I'm always like around the corner from the side. Yeah, I can see down here, there's something, you know, so I'm always like uncovering opportunities. And that's my, that's my default. That's not everybody's default, but that's my default. And so when I talked about um, carving out a lane for yourself, there's many ways to do that um, on dibs, um, even if I was looking at, so let's say I'm, first of all, I'm approaching dibs knowing that this is something that I want to do. I want to supply product and not only do I want to supply product, but I want to supply product to DLA. So for, um, I, I got that part. Because that's what I want to do, I have already taken the initiative to do what I said, which is find out what the agency is about, what they buy, how they buy, which one of those um, six um, um, subordinate commands I'm going to be, I'm going to belong to, right? So am I going to support troop support? Am I going to support aviation? So I've done all of that. Once I've decided on which one of those three I'm really going to focus on and I think, okay, troop support, I'm drilling down even further. So now I need to know the people in Philadelphia. So I'm doing these steps, right? And then I, I'll get to a point where I know the um, FSC codes for the things that are housed at troop support, right? Because remember, DLA is doing a couple of things. They are shipping out. They are housing for times of war and natural disaster. They are, you know, they're doing a lot of different things. And um, I, I don't know a bunch of them off the top. FSC. Um, so let's say I'm coming here and I've, I've, I've determined that 6510, um, 6510, 65, whatever. I'm just whatever they are, right? I have a I have a list of all the PSC codes that are connected to the area I believe that I'm going to kind of play in, right? So let's say I have 10 of them. I'm putting two in here right now. When I do my search for these, okay, so 47 come up. Now I can make a decision now whether or not I want to go after things that are free and open, or do I just want to focus on things that have um, small business attached to them, right? So these are all decisions that I'm making as I'm looking. So that's one thing. But then I can go over here to issue date and return by date, and I can sort if you press return by date, for example, it'll sort by return by date. OK, this return by date is telling me a little something, something. Now I only have two in here. So when you have more, you'll have more opportunities. But I have something in here that's been in here since August, something else since November of last year, something else since December of 23. Right. And so these could be like, why are they still open? I don't know. This one is not only set aside for small business, but they want 2,888 of whatever it is. It's been open since November, right? It's pressure dressing. When I say carve out an opportunity, I'm saying, uh, this might be something. How much more of this do they buy? How much more of this do they need? Um, is it that I need to develop a relationship with Altitude Technologies and maybe supply just for them? Um, these are these are the things that I'm going through in my mind to carve an opportunity for myself. If I end up um, getting access to whatever this is and getting a price and putting it in and contacting the contractor and saying, hey, listen, do you have need for this? Again, I'd like to be your supplier. You, and, and so I might just be supplying this. And the way that I found it is because of all the steps that I just went through. Okay. That's my six figure mastermind strategy stuff. <laughs> you got it. You got what I'm saying? 
Um, so that's what I mean by you, you're discovering your own opportunities. Um, the other thing is remember when some of these companies, like I would take this company right here, th their cage code. Actually, I would take both of these. Yeah. I'll take this company, Altitude Technologies. I go over here to awards. Well, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go to awards. And I'm going to drop their cage code in awards to see if they've won any awards, which means they quote directly. Okay, so they're in here six times. The last award that they won was in December for $64,000. Prior to that, though, it was in like 2020. Oh, no, the last one was January, a small one. So look at their award history. 2012, 2016, 2020, 2023, 2024. Let's see. I mean, they're an approved source, right? So this means the approved source is actually pursuing the opportunity. Are they a small business? I don't know. The opportunity we just saw that's not awarded is a small business. Maybe they didn't quote it because they're not a small business and they don't have a small business partner. You see what I'm saying? That could be... So you, you got to really be, you know, I watch cop shows. You understand what I'm saying? I'm special forces. I like problem solving. <laughs> it's just my natural, right? I watch problem solve TV. Um, so now I'm going to go back to RFQs and I'm going to drop their cage code again. And I just want to see, like, are there other things that the government is asking for where they are the approved source? Well, there's two. Why didn't they go after this one? Are they a small business? Somebody tell me, let me see who has smart y'all law. How could I find out if they're a small business or not? Sam, look up. Bam, Sam, right? They have a cage code, you have a cage code. They had to register in Sam, just like you had to register in Sam. So if I go to Sam and pull up their company name or um, put their cage code in, then I can determine whether or not they're a small business. If they're not a small business, then that might be the reason why they didn't quote it. And then I would take their information, their cage code, and I would drop it in cage.dla.mil, right? I would drop it into cage.dla.mil, and then... I would search, I would pull them up. I would call Mr. William Crowder, 970. Hey, my name is Serena Moore Thomas. This is what we do. You know, our we work with work really, really closely with the DLA on the, you know, the DLA internet big board system. And I know that you guys are an approved source and use their ba -ba -ba -ba. Um, and there's a outstanding um solicitation that I'm I'm interested in pursuing. Do you have a small business partner? What do you mean? Do I have distributors? Well, uh, distributors or any others, because there are a few solicitations that are set aside for a small business. And I am a small business. Um, we totally understand how to, you know, work in dibs and do the contract administration. We would order directly from you. So, you know, you never lose on price. Whatever price you give me, is that that's the price we would pay. Um, and then we would go ahead and put the quote in and place the order with you once we win the award. Bam, boom, pow. That's what I mean, carve your own lane out. Okay, next question. I have a question. Go. Good morning. Um, it's returning to yesterday when you mentioned, I wrote it down, um, no drop shipping in DLA. So my question is, do we need a separate, you kind of touched on it, but I'm kind of confused. Do we need a separate address um, if we're going to be bidding and dip? A separate address from what? Well, it's I guess it's a two-part question. Um, can you explain what you mean by no drop shipping? And then I remembered you saying that sometimes you may have to take delivery and repackage the items. And then you were talking about a virtual office. Um, okay. And I was kind of confused. Got it. So, um, so yes, there is absolutely no drop shipping to the depot, which means you do not place the order with a supplier and have a supplier send it directly to the depot like Amazon drop ship works. You understand? Mm -hmm. So 
And the reason why is because there are specific labeling requirements from the contractor. Um, there's specific RFID tags and there's specific um, packaging requirements. So depending on what you're supplying to the DLA, they may require that you package, um, let's say, let's say there are some screws, okay? There are screws that you're, um, you're supplying and they're ordering 5,000. Well, in your contract document, it may say that the 5,000 need to be packaged in 100 per poly bag and each bag needs to be labeled with the quantity, the cage, code, you know, with all the things that the identifiers, the NSN number, the part number, the cage code of who supplied it and all the things and the manufacturer's cage code. Um, that's that's what your uh, document might say. What you would not be able to do is have your supplier send them 5,000 screws. Mm -hmm. And this, this is when it, it goes back to knowing who you're working with. The reason why they have specific packaging requirements is because of what DLA does. They're the Home Depot for the government. You know what I'm saying? So when they have to deploy those screws out to whoever gets them, they need to be able to send them a hundred at a time. And somebody at the depot is not about to sit there and count them out a hundred at a time. That's what they have you for. So you how would I, I mean? do that? If it's so that's, I guess that's what I'm confused. How would I do that? How would I, where would I ship it to? Yeah, you to would, you would receive. So you, if you were placing an order with the supplier, the supplier would need to ship it to you. You would receive it in your space you would have to get poly bags from Uline or whoever you got to get them from. Uline is, you know, is a good one. You have to get the poly bags. You have to count them out <laughs> and put 100 in the bag. You have to print out the labels. You have to label each bag. You okay. have to package it in the box and send the box and make sure the labeling on the box is correct. And then send that box to the depot the, and, and the instructions for how to do that and when to do that are in your award document. So you would need some sort of separate office space to- You may, stuff. you right. may. And so when I was talking about a virtual office, I wasn't necessarily talking about a virtual mailbox. Like we, I own a co-working space, right? Highmark Solutions is a co-working space, but we offer offices to, um, dedicated offices to small businesses too. So we have other, uh, other businesses who have an office in our space. So if you have a, a dedicated office space at a co-working space, that would be good. If you have um, access to an office through even an incubator, at, like some of the SBDCs um, often have incubator space. So if you have space somewhere, that's what you would use. Okay. Um, you don't, and here's the other thing. I mean, we, we have students who have started out like in their garage. <laughs> okay, so... DLA is is cracking down a little bit more on suppliers and you may get to the point where they start asking you for like your office address, pictures of your office, make sure you're compliant. Um, certain things that you supply uh, need to be uh, approved by DCMA. So somebody from the government has to come out, see the part, physically put eyes on it. And while it's in your box and they have to sign off that that's the right part and before you can even ship it. So there's so many different types of opportunities in dibs. So you, you know, having an office is helpful for sure. Um, and again, if that's going to be your business, if that's going to be a business that you focus on, absolutely, you're going to need an office. While you don't have to have inventory, you do have to have a place where you can receive, repackage, ship out, and a place where DCMA can come inspect if that's what they need to do. Seems a lot, a little complicated, but okay, no worries. It is a little bit. Um, it's big fun and big money, but it ain't easy. It's not, you know, it, it's not, it's not the same as a unison. And that's exactly. why I, <laughs> that's right. Thinking. It's not the same as, but, and remember, that's why I kept stressing on Unison, you're typically delivering to a base, an office, maybe a Marine center or something like that. You understand what I'm saying? With DLA, you are only shipping to the depot. They just have different requirements. 
So that's why it's a little more lenient on the, on the Unison global side. That's also why I had to do a whole separate course <laughs> just for dibs. And so, and you're a student, Colleen, so you get, you know, you can go through that, but that's a whole nother business. I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm in the first, I'm in the first module. You and the Unison, yeah. and that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Know your lane, stay in it. Um, the people that want to be in dibs are committed to dibs. And then I have one other question I'm done for today. I'm um, following back up to when I mentioned about, I cannot get access to dibs. I did call Sam customer service. They confirmed I'm active and my cage code is active as of December 25th. And they don't know why I can't log into dibs. So at this point, um, I don't know. Okay. So you might be making one of the common mistakes then which is in dibs and um, in dibs, it, it's very sensitive, right? So um, in dibs, anytime you put a number in and you hit the space bar, like most of us do after we do something, it, um, it reads that space as a character. And so when you go to register and it says to enter your cage code, if mm -hmm. you put your cage code and there's a space after it, it's gonna say doesn't recognize your cage. Was that awesome or what? I told you you were in for a treat. So I need you to do a couple things for me. First, share your greatest takeaway in the comments below. Second, hit that like button, okay? And then lastly, check out our description box. There are goodies in there for you. So I'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.